a todos. Muy buenas tardes, eh, bienvenidos a esta vuelta de Madrid Juke después del verano. Estamos de vuelta de nuevo y con un evento que de momento sigue siendo virtual. Veremos a ver cuándo podemos vernos las caras más de cerquita. Pero estamos muy contentos con, con la charla de hoy. Teníamos muchas ganas de la mano de Jean-Philippe Bempel sobre eh, el monitoreo de la producción. Para, estoy segura que, que muchos de nosotros nos hemos enfrentado a momentos en los que hay un un problema de performance en producción o de memoria y, y no sabemos ni siquiera qué herramientas tenemos a mano para poder, para poder indagar y debuguear un poco más. Así que la charla de hoy va sobre eso. Eh, bienvenidos de nuevo, ya sabéis que podéis hacer preguntas en el chat. Yo creo que las preguntas que vayáis teniendo las vamos a dejar para un momento en el que Jean-Philippe tenga un poco más de tiempo de responder, pero bueno, las podéis ir poniendo que David y yo iremos, iremos dosificándolas y, y vigilando que no se quede nada por ahí. Así que nada, le voy a pasar la palabra a David, que nos va a hablar un poco más de Jean-Philippe y a introducir a, a nuestro speaker de hoy. Okay, I will switch directly to English to introduce our our speaker. Uh, to be honest, I'm really proud to have him here today. I met Jean Philippe uh, the first time a couple of years ago. A couple of uh, meaning uh, with this pandemic and the lockdown, and not counting the last uh, couple of years. Uh, it means probably four years ago that we had the chance to drive together. He was driving me, in fact, to Jay Creed from the airport. And uh, from that very uh, first moment, uh, we started to have some discussions uh, around JVM. And uh, Jean-Philippe is, um, is very much into um, monitoring the JVM, is in very much into uh, getting the most of our applications uh, without trying to, or with, or trying to reduce contention and uh, looking for low latency algorithms and applications. And he's, uh, in fact, uh, been also uh, uh, involved or a follower of the mechanical sympathy block, as far as I know, uh, which has a lot of, uh, of interesting contents. And Since a couple of years ago, I think, uh, Jean-Philippe uh, started joining Datadog uh, and he started to work on the tools uh, that allows developer to help make our applications more efficient and more, uh, and more uh, performant. So uh, today we have one of the of the developers that in fact is contributing to some of the tools that we could use for, for measuring and profiling our applications. So my advice uh, tonight or this, this, uh, this day in this session is that you will try to take the most of him because he's a really smart guy and he will probably give Uh, us a lot of tricks and a lot of information that will allow us to to become uh, better developers. So with with no further ado, I will leave the stage to Jean Philippe because he has a lot of, of things to to share with us. Jean Philippe, welcome to Madrid Jack. Uh, we are all ears. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for this introduction, Ari and, and David. Um, so, yes. Um, so, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jean-Philippe, uh, and I'm working at Datadog. Um, I'm also an open JDK committer for JDK Mission Control um, and a Java champion. Um, so, uh, today we will discuss uh, the production profiling. So, I think everybody one day has used a profiler to find performance issues. Uh, and JFR, JDK uh, Fright Recorder, was designed for production time. And uh, we are using it uh, massively at Datadog. Uh, so this talk is an introduction to JDK Fright Recorder as JFR, 
now and JDK Mission Control on JMC. Um, um, so small, uh, small word uh, from our sponsor, uh, Datadog is hiring uh, with full remote uh, possibility. Um, so don't hesitate to contact uh, Alvin. Uh, here, the, the email address, if you are interested uh, to uh, work uh, with her. Um, so I would like to start by a quote from Tony Printesis, uh, that is a JVM engineer at Twitter. Uh, during his presentation at DevOx uh, Belgium in uh, 2015. Uh, the big change is no longer really performance. The big change is profiling, and especially profiling in production. Um, <clears throat> what will we expect from a production profiler? Uh, a minimal observer uh, effect, which means a low overhead, barely me measurable, not affecting the behavior of the application, and not reverting any optimizations done by the JIT. Uh, it should also be safe to use in production. It means well-tested and also widely used. So the, the JDK uh, flight recorder is like the data flight recorder you, you find in a commercial uh, JIT. Um, but instead of recording what's happening in an aircraft, it will record what is going on, on uh, in the, the JVM and the, the application running in the, in the JVM. The flight recorder, even when recording quite a lot of different kinds of information, has very low overhead. Um, it's typically less than a percent, uh, thanks to its high performance record uh, engine. So um, JFR will record JVM information. You can add custom events to record your own information with JVA, Java API. Um, it helps you to solve a wide range of problems. It's not just another CPU provider. While uh, beginning its life as a commercial product uh, with Oracle, it has been open sourced in OpenJDK 11 and later backported to OpenJDK 8. Uh, since update 262 uh, slash 272, uh, the difference is because some vendor of the and that that provide the, this uh, this um, this distribution will include the JFR in 262 and. Uh, the upstream build or was uh, automatically included into uh, 72. So, for example, if you took an uh, image from the OpenJDK official image repository from uh, Docker uh, Docker Hub, it's from the, the 272. Um, right. Um, so, how JFR helps you resolve problem faster in production? Sorry. Imagine you have an issue in production, but only happens in production and cannot reproduce in test environments. With JFR data can always uh, be recorded and can be uh, processed them, uh, can process them a post-mortem to find the cause of your issue. Also, the, um, the profile files can be shared or centralized to your observability system to be processed. Um, the, the JFR recording has very low hover observable uh, effects as it does not undo any optimization like scalarization, uh, as known as escape analysis, and stack trace are collected without safe point, uh, like um, async profiler that uh, do uh, the similar things. That's the, basically it's the, the, the same shared code uh, and the, the same technique, at least, um, to, uh, to do that. Um, JFR is a bundle with comprehensive toolchain. Um, you can control flight recorder using common line parameter like the dash xx uh, flight recorder options. You can also use Java, Java API, JMX uh, API with uh, Visual VM or JMC. Uh, GCMD is a common line tool provided by the JDK. And finally, the JDK mission control itself. You can add uh, custom data slash event through uh, to Java API. Um, using GMC agents or by third party integration like open tracing, Brave and other. To consume data recorded, uh, you can uh, uh, use the, the GMC app, uh, but also the, the GMC core libraries or the JFR command line tool uh, provided in, a, in a, into the JDK. The data collected by uh, JFR uh, are recorded as events. Um, those events are data points in time and have typed and self-describing attributes. So you can record specific types like size in bytes or time in milliseconds, seconds. Um, 
And JFR is already recording different kind of data for uh, CPU profiling, allocation profiling, thread uh, latency profiling, um, G, uh, GC and compiler, uh, memory leak profiler, um, and some uh, information about file and socket IO, and much more. Um, the size is typically two megs per minute. Uh, so it's uh, represent like uh, around uh, 100,000 um, events. And um, internally, uh, JFR has um, thread local buffers into which most events are recorded. Uh, once uh, full, they get copied into a circular arrangement of global buffers. And depending on the configuration, this buffer can simply keep writing them. Uh, and we can decide to dump them at, at some other time or emitting them to this to for, for further analysis on your cool machine uh, or uh, your observability uh, system. You can add your own J5 event. So what for? For example, in the context of uh, distributed tracing, you can record uh, your own event, uh, the trace span ID, which will be recorded um, with the same timestamps than the other events because piggybacked to the whole JFR infrastructure. So, which can help you correlate long lasting span to actual issues in the JVM or application. Um, the, the event can be consumed like any other events. You can also benefit from JFR infrastructure for cheaper timestamping, creating stack traces uh, without uh, safe points and, and compact representation. Sorry. So here you have a basic example of a custom event with only a string for storage. Uh, you, cre you create uh, the event, store the message, and commit. Um, and if you have some uh, concern about performance, um, you benefit from the JIT optimization for that. So if the event is disabled, um, the event is optimized away. You, you apply some scalarization, um, plus the, the commit method is in line. So the JIT is able to, to recognize that this is a dead code and it is, is completely optimized away. A more complex uh, example where you can annotate fields and attributes with types of data. Uh, they store <coughs> size uh, in bytes, address uh, in hexadecimal, uh, timestamp in milliseconds, which help consumer to display correct information. Uh, you can control flight recorder by different means uh, through GMC uh, via uh, GMX connection, local or remote, uh, locally with command line uh, and uh, JCMD, uh, through JVM uh, command line flags, uh, and programmatically uh, with either GMX API or Java API. Um, JFR is able uh, to use template files for, configura for configuring um, um, events. Uh, those templates uh, contain information about what and how to record events. So what event types to enable, what threshold to use for events with duration, what periodicity to sample requestable events. And inside the JDK packaging, two JFR template files are provided. So default is which was as less than 1% uh, of a red and the, the profile uh, template with more information and less than 2% uh, of a red. So those templates are located inside the, the, the lib uh, slash GFR uh, folder and can be edited uh, slash exported uh, from uh, GMC. So once you have a recording, uh, how to process, consume them. Um, you can use a command line tool provided by the JK, GFR to look at the recording. Uh, JDK is also shipped with a parser to load the recordings, but it only supports um, the current version of the JDK and perform only external it iterations, so events to events, uh, nothing uh, at the attribute uh, level. <clears throat> GMT is shipped with its own JFR parser, which supports all versions of JFR since JDK 7. Uh, this um, library compiles and runs with JDK 8 and above. Uh, it also includes analysis rules, which is 
a set of heuristics to help you di diagnose issues uh, inside the, the, the recording. You can perform a declarative and internal iteration of the recording and aggregate across attributes of events. Um, those uh, artifacts are now available on, uh, on Maven Central, so you can use it uh, as dependency uh, for your own tool and, and build your own tool. Um, and of course, James' application itself will is the browsing of the recording. So we have a screenshot of, uh, of James here. Uh, we'll do a demo after that. At Datadog, we process those recordings in our backend with the, the core uh, parser and display results in our web UI. So we have a screenshot of what we are doing uh, with the, the, those core libraries. Recording. Regarding profilers, um, so whatever they, they, they are, you should always be aware of the, the bias that have uh, that have those profilers. So some will change the, the runtime behavior, so undo uh, and optimization of the, the JIT. Some are safe point based, so all the stack traces are taken uh, at safe point when the old threads are stopped. Um, you can have more information about this uh, in, uh, in the Nitsan talk. Uh, the profilers are lying hobbits, and we had them. Uh, that's a very good talk to, to understand what are the, the, those uh, trade-offs about the profiler, and, and you, you should be aware of. Each profiler has been designed with some trade-off, as I said. So for JFR, um, execution sample, and, uh, that's the, the, the use for CPU profiling, are chosen to be very low impact and constant overhead. Um, so uh, JFR is uh, using uh, for each sample max uh, five threads and does not include the native threads uh, per, sam per sample. Allocation profiling is a sampling from uh, TLAB, uh, the thread local allocation buffer retirement. So this is a, an estimation, but a good one over time. Um, and JFR, JFR collects contextual, contextual information, like the, for example, locks. Uh, for, um, for locks, it's a thread monitor class, which thread is holding the, the lock, or, and the monitor address. But there is also a price, and here there is the, this is the threshold. Um, it's for, for locks, it's between 10 and 20 milliseconds. Um, so this threshold is good for outliers, but we may uh, overflow by uh, some with just above the threshold or missing a lot uh, of them uh, just below this, uh, this threshold. So I will uh, show you uh, some a demo of uh, JFR in action. Uh, hope, uh, it's uh, correct. So if uh, you can you can see uh, the uh, on JDK uh, where are the located the, the templates. Um, so let me uh, show you uh, an example of the, those templates and where they are uh, uh, located. So in libjfr directory, you have um, two profile default GFC and profile GFC. And if you look inside them, uh, you will have the, all the, the configuration for each event. Uh, so you have the event name, for example, the JDK, sorry, the location statistic, if it is uh, enabled or not in this profile and what is the periodicity uh, of those events collected, so every chunk in this case. Um, and you have different kind of periodicity uh, every second for class holding statistics. Uh, for thread start, for example, or thread, uh, you have the stack trace that is collected, and that is true. So all the settings for the, the hundreds of uh, events are here, and so you can edit them uh, to, to build your own profile. So let's, let's start an application with the JFR uh, directly. So to, to start uh, JDK Flight Recorder, you can use uh, the Start uh, Flight Recording uh, option uh, with some parameter, say the file name where we put the, the recording, the clinic in my case. Um, I would like to dump on exit of my application the, the file, the, the, the recording, and I would like to use the profile, um, I mean, the settings, the, all, the, all those events with the profile uh, one, uh, so this one. And then I can uh, launch my application. It's a pet clinic application, spring pet clinic application. 
and yeah, that's it. So it starts the recording. I have uh, some information about this uh, when it starts the, the application. And once the application is started, just put it in background. And then I can use the JCMD uh, tool uh, to look at my application. And uh, that. And uh, so my application uh, PID is here, JCMD on this uh, PID. It look, uh, I have uh, the list of all the commands that I can use. There is some special one for JFA. Uh, so we can try uh, the JFA.check to see what is the status of JFA for this application. So I see that for this PID, I have one recording, name is one uh, for, the, for the, the recording in memory. And the max size of this recording in memory will be uh, 250 uh, megabytes and it's running. But I can start a new one. I can have multiple recording uh, in flight. Uh, so just uh, starting a new one. So I've started a recording number two, um, no limit specified. Uh, and there is some hints to say, okay, if you want to dump this uh, recording, you can use uh, this, uh, this uh, command. So let's do what is recommended. So dump the name equals two and the file name on disk will be, uh, okay, let's tmp 2jfr uh, And we are dumping uh, the recording with one megabyte on disk at this location. Uh, and if I'm, I'm, I'm looking again on the status, we have two recording uh, started, so I will stop one, the, the second one that I uh, started. So let me stop name equals two. So the, the to the recording two is stopped and I can check that I have only one recording that was started uh, when I start the, the application. Um, so now I would like to uh, exit my application. I'm exiting this application and then I have on, uh, on this now um, the, the recording pet clinic that is higher, um, larger than the, the TPA one where we there's only one megabyte. So now that I have those recordings, what can I do? Um, so I can look into those recordings using the, the JFR command that have some, some uh, useful uh, uh, command inside. So JFR summary, for example, that give me um, the um, a summary of what's inside the, the JFR. So I have the number of chunks, for example, when, this, uh, when the, the recording was started, the duration of the, of the recording, uh, and the, 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 an histogram of all the events inside this recording uh, with the, the, the type, the number of events, and the size on, the, on disk, uh, uh, the sum of uh, the, the size of disk of all each of those events. So let's take uh, one, uh, for example, the, this one. Uh, I would like to look at those events thread pack um, now. Uh, let's check uh, uh, print events JDK thread pack uh, from uh, this recording. And it prints all my events uh, with uh, the information inside these events. Uh, so we have for each event when the, the timestamp, the duration, um, and uh, some some custom information about the, those events. For example, the, the park class. Uh, we have the address of the monitor and the thread that was um, parked, um, and the stack trace where the, the park was called. You can see that uh, it's only limited on five um, uh, level of the stack trace. If you want the increase uh, this level to see the full stack trace. Um, we'll add um, the option stack uh, depth uh, to, for example, 128, and you will get the full stack trace uh, in, the, in this way. Uh, you can, we could also um, use a JSON format uh, to able to, to process uh, the, um, the recording with some tools uh, that easier to, to uh, to pass with uh, JSON and to manipulate and extract the data from, from this. Okay, let's uh, go back uh, to our presentation. 
Um, and let's talk about uh, the PDK mission control now. Um, so um, GMC uh, is a tool suite uh, that encompass JFR for creating, recording, and analyzing them, uh, JMX console for real-time monitoring, and additional plugins, uh, Geo Overflow, uh, that is uh, integrated by default now, um, and some extra JFR tooling, like uh, event metadata, G1 visualization, um, and uh, the plugin for creating GMC plugins. Um, GMC is actually an open source project under OpenJDK uh, project. Um, and the main contributors are Oracle, Red Hat, Datadog, and some external contributors. Uh, binaries are redistributed by Oracle, Azul, Bellsoft, uh, and uh, Adopt uh, OpenJDK, uh, that is now Adoptium. Um, and the, there is also an Eclipse plugin, so you can start uh, directly um, GMC inside Eclipse because uh, GMC is an Eclipse based uh, tool. <clears throat> so you, um, you can uh, get JFR recordings from different sources. Uh, uh, local JVM um, and local JVM are automatically discovered um, with JFR already enabled or not uh, from files brought by other means or from remote uh, JVMs. From GMC, you can control the creation of recording uh, through a wizard um, and then browsing those records uh, with a, a world overview with the result of the analysis. So pre-built uh, pages like metal profiling, logs, memory, etc. cetera. Um, event browser, which gives you the full content, uh, even the custom ones. So if you create your own uh, events, you can also see the content of those events directly into GMC without any um, additional code inside GMC. It's already uh, uh, possible to, to see those. Um, finally, you can add some custom pages for existing events. Uh, and for your uh, your custom ones. So if you want to, to customize uh, the, the, the way your custom events are showed in GMC, you, you can also uh, add, that, add that. So let's uh, take a look at, uh, at GMC. So let me start directly GMC mission control uh, for my application. That's the latest uh, released, so 8.1. Um, I will uh, open uh, recording already that I had. Okay, so the first, um, first page when you open uh, a recording is this automated analysis results. It gives you, um, so it's um, it applying some heuristic uh, against all the, the, the events uh, recorded inside um, uh, the JFR the recording and uh, give you some hints about what uh, is going on wrong uh, on those uh, on, in, in inside your application. So it gives you hints to where to look at, what are the page that you can see there's something that is go going wrong. So for example, in Java application, I have a very bad number for application halts uh, that may be correlated to the GC poses because on garbage collection, we have also something that is bad. Uh, so application efficiency was affected by GC poses. That's a 18% uh, time during uh, execution time that our uh, correction poses. So maybe I should look uh, at this. Um, so, uh, and also I have some problem with sockets. Uh, there is longest um, socket read that are very long. So some, there are some area that I need to take a look uh, to see what's going on. And you have some exclamation mark on those pages that you should take a look. So let's, for example, take a look at uh, the garbage collection pages. Uh, so here you have all the, 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 the GC that are recorded uh, during the, the, that time. Um, we can uh, sort by longest post, 600 milliseconds, that's very long. And you have also the, this, um, this graph to, to show you the, um, all the information about the poses and, and the, the EP evolution. Can have select, uh, some uh, some information about that. Uh, you have also some detailed uh, information about the pose. So one pose, you can see uh, what is the breakdown inside a pose. Uh, if there is some uh, references that are taken a lot of time or not. Um, 
we can have a take a look at the socket um, and see what's what's going on on the remote address, for example, or the duration of this, um, and uh, you have a SRAM of those, uh, those and the stack trace that is uh, uh, related to to uh, to the, the long read operation. On the memory side, um, we have the, the the total location per class type uh, with the stack trace uh, uh, associated. So you can have the here the, the stack trace um, from where the those, for example, uh, boxing long are created, and so we can uh, track down why those um, uh, boxing long are created. So maybe we can. Uh, Fix that if uh, if needed. Um, what else uh, that we can show also is the um, yeah the, the event browser. The event browser is all the, the those um, events that uh, is recorded with all the category and all the information that is recorded. You have also the the the, um, the specific one. So for example, this is a recording that we we had at Datadog and we have uh, added some custom event. Uh, that we created at Datadog for our application. And so we can see those events um, uh, with all the information that we, we gather here uh, directly into the, 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 the GDK mission control. And this mission control is not custom uh, for Datadog. It's the, the, the one that you can download uh, directly and you can see all those events. OK, uh, let's go back. Um, oh. We can also show you uh, so a method profiling the, the flame view. So you have also the uh, a flame view uh, that is very similar to the, the flame graph uh, that you are maybe are uh, used to, to see. Uh, so instead of having the disk stack trace, you can have this flame view if you are more uh, familiar with this, with the, the zooming also that is uh, available uh, inside uh, this, this view. Um, okay, let's go back to the, the presentation and, uh, and move a little bit more. Okay. Um, so um, we have um, um, here an, an example um, of the usage of the uh, um, GMC uh, core library for processing and aggregating events. So you're, you're loading a file. Uh, your filter as um, uh, those events on, for example, the, the monitor uh, enter event, and you can uh, apply some aggregation about the number of events, the average, the standard deviation, and you can output then, uh, that uh, directly into uh, uh, the console uh, with uh, um, a friendly uh, display, user friendly display. Um, I would do a demo uh, on that also. Um, later, um, we have also uh, the possibility to um, generate a report. Uh, so, so this uh, this small example is to create a report and the, of the rule analysis in an HTML format. So the, the same that you have inside GMC, you can uh, use the core library to load the, the recording, create this report, and display it. Uh, to your, your user uh, outside of GMC uh, UI. So let's have an, uh, an example of, uh, of the usage of this API um, directly um, with the, uh, the, the JShell. Uh, so I have a demo uh, of JShell uh, and GMC that I can show you what we can do directly. Uh, so let's uh, maybe uh, let me check the version there, that's good. And, and then um, jshow.run. Okay. okay. So I will open some uh, imports directly with this and I have also prepared some uh, flame graph function. Okay, so now um, what I would like to do is loading a, a JFAR file. Um, so to this, uh, let me see events. Uh, I'm using the JFAR loader toolkit um, to load events um, 
Yes. Uh, from a uh, file, and this file is let me see the recording let me see GFR that I have uh, locally. Uh, okay, so here my events are loaded from GFR, and I can manipulate them with the this uh, this variable let me see events, um, and I can filter uh, those events to get the the monitor enter events enter events. Uh, like this, so I can latency events uh, and apply uh, some filtering. So um, I'm filtering uh, based on the type of the, the event and uh, the GDK type IDs are the monitor enter. Enter, there's are several of them. Okay, so I'm applying this, and now in my variable monitor enter events, I have all the monitor enter events. So I can uh, now aggregate and see what is the average uh, wait time on on uh, on blocks uh, on synchronized blocks. Um, so I'm calculating the, the average um, with those events uh, and get aggregate uh, about uh, using aggregators uh, that uh, average. DVG, and I'm averaging on the um, on the attributes uh, duration duration like this. Yep, I have completion also in JSON. That's very convenient, and that's my uh, average. Um, so be the, uh, basically, the this average uh, per position is not very user friendly. So to uh, display it correctly, I'm using the the display uh, using display. I know that's not max that's average, of course. Uh, display using um, my displayable label in automatic. So my average of waiting time is three point six uh, second. That's uh, that's a lot. Um, uh, but yeah. Uh, that's that's uh, some information and some statistic I can get from from those events. So let's take another example. Um, so now I will uh, look into a new file uh, and look at the GC for example. So I'm loading a new events, a new file, uh, and uh, my TTSPJ for recording here. And uh, I will filter uh, to get all the GC events. Um, so TTSP events dot apply so again on item and filters uh, based on the type of event um, and those event type IDs are uh, garbage correction, garbage correction. Okay. So um, now I have all the those uh, GC events, and now I would like to see um, the maximum time post time of um, those GC. So from GC events, um, I get an aggregation, uh, and this type of aggregation aggregator is a max uh, on a J um, on JFR attributes again. Of the duration of each event. And that's the max. Again, I will display this correctly. Display all your team. Display auto. And that's 279 milliseconds for the maximum GC. Which right. Okay. For my application, that's that's fine. So I'm 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 happy to, to see uh, those uh, those numbers for in the statistics for for the GC. So the problem is not on GC. Okay, let's see now um, some uh, way to generate uh, a flame graph uh, from the um, event that are execution sample. Execution sample are uh, taking the uh, the sample of all the the threads, not all the threads, five threads per, per per cycle, but uh, the, the stack traces for 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 those threads, and we can aggregate aggregate them um, and instead of just showing stack trace in, a, in the in text format, I will generate a flame graph uh, for me. Uh, so let's take those examples, so prof events, uh, 
um, and JFR loader toolkits to load uh, events, a new file. And this file is uh, my uh, data dog prof uh, analyzer.jfr. So it's, it's uh, this one. It's loading. Yeah, it's loading. That's great. So it's a larger one. <clears throat> and, uh, and now I will e extract and um, filter. Uh, examples by using the prof uh, events and applying again a filtering filters and a type and JDK type IDs is the um, execution sample. This one seems correct. Okay. And now I will use, um, so I've um, I've imported already in a, a function that I've written uh, apart so that has uh, um, imported into my JShell, and I'm using this uh, function export to collapsed um, <clears throat> with those examples, with this uh, samples, sorry, and uh, and I'm exporting this into a file. Uh, it's the prop uh, analyzer .txt. Um, So I'm using. Uh, those samples and take the stack traces and I'm exporting it to uh, the, the collapse format for flame graph. Um, and uh, it's the double quotes. Um, and now I've uh, generated uh, this uh, this uh, prof and ISO text, txt text file. Uh, all the stack traces are uh, limited by uh, uh, semicolon and uh, at the end I have the uh, one for uh, the number of times I have this uh, this stack trace. So this is a, a, a an intermediate format before the, the flame graph. And now I can use the the from the the GitHub the flame graph uh, from Brandon Greg uh, the the script flame graph uh, dot Perl um, on this uh, this file a professional text and um, I can. Uh, generate a prof uh, SVG on this analyzer SVG. It's processing, okay, seems good. Let's open this on a uh, web browser. Uh, and let me show you the flame graph here. Okay, and yeah, that's the, the execution sample that I had in this recording. And now it's in a, in a SVG flame graph format, and so you can browse it. Um, okay, um, we can. So that's the, the execution sample and the execution uh, flame graph. But you can also uh, generate. Uh, it's it's have a bonus a demo, and and let's uh, generate um, another flame graph. Uh, but not on about the, the execution, but um, on the <clears throat> and the monitor enter. So I would like to know in a flame graph where my uh, my monitor um, have been contended. So let's uh, open again the GMC. Uh, open my uh, flame graph script, um, and then um. Audience and chief uh, loader toolkit load events and uh, file. Uh, so I'm taking uh, the same uh, than previously. So the prof analyzer and JFR. Okay, and again, um, okay, Let's see the same one. All events apply. I'm just uh, switching from exec sample to um, the monitor enter type. Monitor enter. Sorry. Uh, so I have all my monitors enters, and now I can export to collapse again uh, those exec samples into a new file. Uh, let's use the prof analyzer um, monitors. 
TXC, duck, this one. Exporting again, I'm missing the double quotes again. Okay. And now I can use uh, this one monitors to uh, profile uh, monitors is the key. Okay. Again. Okay, open this one and let's open again on uh, Chrome. And now we have the stack traces where we have my, my uh, monitor. Um, so this one, for example, okay, to, to name service addresses, get there should be a, a lock on this, and we have some contention on, on this, and we have one sample for that. 23 samples in total, um, and 20 samples for this one on the name service get addresses get with this stack trace. And for EPOL, we have three samples for that. So we, we can export and manipulate that and uh, send those uh, recording to be processed on your observability system to, to, have, to gather statistics or flame graph stack traces uh, to be able to um, uh, uh, troubleshoot your, your performance issue. <clears throat> okay, that's the all for GMC Core Demos. Um, GMC is also um, uh, uh, have this uh, GMC agent. Um, this uh, this is now it was an incubated pro project, but now uh, is published uh, uh, with GMC. Um, you can. Uh, um, you can, if you start your application with GMC agent, um, it allows you to insert uh, on the fly uh, some custom events uh, everywhere in your application. So the way you, usually you have your, your custom events, uh, you create your custom event, and you need to, to manu manually insert those events where you, you, you think that this is useful. But um, you can now insert the, your event directly into a uh, production uh, in your application uh, without recompiling it. Um, and so, so you can insert afterward uh, those events if you, you need to, to troubleshoot that. So that's very uh, convenient. The only thing is to have this JMC agent um, to be um, declared on the command line of Java, uh, the Java command line. Um, so in summary, um, I recommend you to, if you're interested in GMC, to, to join the, the, the project mailing list. Um, so you, you can, it's open source on GitHub, so you can uh, directly uh, clone and, and see what you, you can add into GMC if you're interested. We have also a Slack, so you can participate into Slack or ask some question, uh, it's open. Um, and you can download GMC uh, in your distribution of your choice. So. For example, um, the Adoptium now, you can have also from uh, Zulu or Bellsoft. Um, and Marcus Hirt, that is the lead of GMC, have, uh, uh, has produced uh, a GMC tutorial that you, can, you could use to, to see um, um, how to use GMC and how you can benefit from all those uh, tooling. And uh, with that, I finished. Uh, my presentation about the uh, GMC and uh, JFR. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you have question, that's uh, that's now the time I can answer those those questions. Uh, you are on mute, David. So I see the question, can you use JFR in a Docker or a slash or a Kubernetes uh, remotely? Um, so, so that's that's what, what you what we, are, we are using at Datadog. Um, uh, we have a lot of applications that are in, uh, in Kubernetes um, and we send uh, the, 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 the recording uh, directly to, uh, to our uh, backend system. Um, so you can, um, can I have an agent uh, that is uh, inside your, your application uh, that can start uh, programmatically your uh, your JFR on your application uh, and get the, the JFR file and snapshot and send it to, to your backend to, to be processed. 
Um, so you can do this or you can try to, to store the JFRA recordings inside a location, a volume mounted inside your Docker or your Kubernetes deployment uh, to, to grab them and to, to process them afterward. Okay, and the next one uh, is by Enrique Martin. Uh, this came up uh, during your last demo, and he's asking if uh, a thread dump and a head dump are a complement to the JDK flight recorder, or um, if uh, this uh, replies them. Well, honestly, um, you, you can. Um, uh, JFI is able to. to um, periodically uh, generate a thread dump, uh, the, the, exactly the same than uh, you have from JSTAC or JCMD thread.print, uh, and store those uh, thread dump inside the some events. Um, but the thing is, uh, those um, this is just text file, the text content, and you need to, to to parse it if you want to analyze this. So you can have those information uh, with JFR periodically. So you. you I mean, not directly SSH to do your um, container or your host and, and do the, the, the JSTAC or JSMD on this. And, uh, um, but the execution sample give you like a, a profiler or the, the thread site that are uh, relevant. Um, and if you have, for example, a lock or whatever, you have information in, inside JFR. Um, regarding the, the heap dump, um, it's not quite completely the same thing. Um, so you can load heap dump inside the uh, GMC uh, to analyze the, the content of your of your heap. Um, if you look for a leak, a leak, um, uh, JFR is able to, to track leak uh, with um, uh, the, the event uh, old object sample uh, because um, it took. Uh, uh, it's sample, uh, in fact, uh, the the old objects that are inside the, the, the heap and the, the, the age of this object. And depending on the size, it can uh, give you the candidates of a leak if those objects are retained for a very, very long time. Uh, it gives you the, this information. So depending on what you want to troubleshoot, uh, you can only use JFR if you want to, to troubleshoot a, a leak with this, uh, this event enabled. Um, or you can have your your old way, old-fashioned way to to heap dump and and uh, and and um, give this uh, opportunity to to load it inside Azure VM or or GMC uh, to analyze the heap and, and to see what is the content and what you can optimize uh, um, of the, the usage of the the heap. Okay. Uh, do you have any any other questions? If uh, if you do, uh, you we still have some minutes to spare and uh, just uh, shoot them because uh, now is your opportunity to ask uh, Jan Philip. And if you don't have any other questions, uh, well. I let's let's wait a couple of or just a minute because uh, we have some delay between the, with the streaming. Okay. But uh, uh, in any case, also remember that uh, at the end of this session, we will also be uh, uh, we we will be we will have a raffle and we have uh, two licenses of uh, a JetBrain product. So anyone that is interested in those, just please say it so on the on the comments. Just say that you are interested and we will uh, raffle these uh, licenses between the people that are interested. And lo repito en español. También eh, recordad que tenemos dos licencias gratuitas. Eh, de, de JetBrains, del producto de JetBrains, porque JetBrains es uno de los patrocinadores que tenemos en Madrid Jack. Entonces, aquellos que estéis interesados en la licencia, la vamos a sortear ahora. Eh, entonces, quien esté interesado en ellas, eh, simplemente que lo vaya diciendo en, en los comentarios y así la sorteamos entre la gente que está, que está interesada. 
Uh, we have an, also another question by Gunta. Uh, how do I know I need to start doing profiling and production? Will there be some strange exceptions or just some in, in Spaniable lacks? That's indeed a, a good question, I think. Yeah, indeed. Um, the thing is, um, what, would, what we would like to, to have with JFR um, is to, 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 to shift the padding. Um, so your, your question is very interesting because you say, okay, I'm starting to, to have maybe some issues in production. So maybe you have already some observability system in, in uh, like Grafana or Datadog or whatever uh, other uh, APM tools that give you some metrics and, and give you some hints that maybe your application is, is doing bad. The thing is we would like, and the way JFA was designed from the bottom up is always enabled. So it said that we have the, 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 the this, uh, this uh, profiling in production always on. Because you have a, a very low overhead, uh, doesn't, it doesn't bother the application or the, 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 the performance of your application. And like any observability system, you have your, your metrics, maybe your distributed uh, tracing. Uh, here we have the, this uh, profiling in, in production uh, always on. And so you can have, um, if you have an issue that is, for example, transient, and you want to, to troubleshoot that, you can go back in time uh, uh, in a way to, to uh, get those, uh, the, the, um, those information, the, those recording to see what was, go what was going on at, at that time. So you don't have to ask this question and say, do we have to start or not the, uh, the recording? For, for me, it's always, it, the, the idea is to be always on, um, to be able to, to go back in time and to see um, what was going on at that time and, and, and able to be able to troubleshoot this issue. Yeah, I think that uh, sometimes profiling and production is undervalued. And it's uh, we, we tend to think that we should also be doing that uh, only when when the application stacks. But I think it's a good idea to have a grasp of how our applications are performing in any yeah. time. You can think of uh, like, I, I think, most of the most of the people are now uh, okay to let the GC logs always on to to be able to uh, understand what the, the 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 behavior of the GC. So you can think of JFR like the, like the same. It's like GC logs. You you um, you uh, always enable those, and uh, once there is an issue, okay, you can go back and see what what was going on. Like you, when you 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 look at your GC logs to see what was going on, but why there is a, this long pause of GC, and you can understand that. Well, okay. Uh, Alvaro also is saying that uh, it's uh, it's interesting your talk, and now it's time to practice. So uh, connecting to with the last question. Yeah, I think it's a good uh, a good idea to have some time to start doing some profiling on your applications and also uh, know the the tools and try to get fluent with with them. Okay, if there is no more questions coming up, uh, I will then switch to um, to the raffle. Uh, we are going to assign numbers to the people that has that have uh, already said that they are interested. So, Enrique, you are with number one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, I know, I know that you are interested. <laughs> So Enrique, you are number one. Oh, I'm, I'm going to switch, Jean Philippe. If you don't mind, I'm going to switch uh, to Spanish in order to do the the raffle. Uh, no problem. So that people can can follow up uh, more easily. Uh, decía que vamos a sortear las uh, las licencias entre la gente que habéis dicho que estáis interesadas. Enrique, voy a asignar un número a cada uno de vosotros y vamos a hacer un sorteo por el maravilloso mecanismo del random.org. Entonces, eh, Enrique, tú juegas con el número uno. Eh, 
José Miguel, tú juegas con el número 2. Gonzalo, tú llevas el número 3. Juan Antonio, tú llevas el número 4. Uh, y creo que están todos. Si hay alguien que falta, tiene tiempo de decirlo mientras hago, mientras conecto para hacer el sorteo. Para hacer el sorteo voy a, voy a, voy a compartir mi pantalla. Ok, Álvaro, tú tienes el número 1, 2, 3, 4, el 5, Álvaro, ¿vale? Si no he contado mal, 1 habíamos dicho para Enrique, 2 José Miguel, 3 Gonzalo, 4 Juan Antonio, 5 eh, Álvaro. Eh, bueno, vamos a generar... Un número entre el 1 y el 5. Y Enrique, tuya es la primera licencia. Vamos, eh, Rafael, no sé si esto quiere decir que estás interesado. Vamos a sortear una segunda. Eh, Enrique, la primera es tuya. La segunda la vamos a sortear entre el 2 y el 6. Y así tenemos en cuenta a Rafael también. Y es el 5 que es para Álvaro. Álvaro, enhorabuena. Tenéis eh, cada uno una licencia. Eh, haced una cosa, poneros eh, por favor en contacto con, con nosotros, bien a través de un, de un mensaje directo en, en, en Twitter o bien a través de un mensaje en, eh, en, a un mensaje en, en Meetup y, y os, eh, os pedimos la dirección de correo electrónico para enviaros la, la, la licencia. Bueno, pues eh, con esto voy a cambiar otra vez a, a inglés. Vamos a a despedir a Jan Philip. Uh, Jan Philip, uh, thank you very much for yes, being yes, with thank us. You. Thank you. Uh, It's a, so much pleasure. Uh, yeah, we we need to repeat this uh, once that we go back to the in person yeah. meetups. Exactly. You, uh, I, I love to be uh, in Madrid. Yeah, of course. We will we will be really happy to have you yeah. uh, here, and hopefully soon we can start. Uh, yeah, doing this in-person meetups yeah. again. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you very yeah. much for thank all the, the information that you shared with with us. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Merci beaucoup. Merci. <laughs>